Gaku Concepto. Dominant chords. You know what those are, right? Because if you don't, I would recommend watching this video before proceeding, because then everything's going to make a lot more sense. Go on, I'll wait. Just pause this video and... Yeah, just go watch that. Anyway, if you need a refresher, the dominant chord is the fifth chord of the key, and it's second in importance to the tonic. It's the greatest source of tension out of all the chords in a key, and it's so useful that many, many, many songs have been written with just the one and five chords alone. Now, the five is the only place where you will see a dominant seventh chord show up naturally within the key. Sticking to the major scale, there's only one possibility for a dominant seventh chord, and that's on the fifth degree. But hey, rules were made to be broken. Since the dominant chord's purpose is to provide tension and prepare for a resolution down a fifth to the tonic, we can take this idea and apply it to just about any other chord in the key. These are called secondary dominants, and I am absolutely certain you have heard at least one in your life. This is one of the most common secondary dominants, the five of five. I first came across secondary dominance by accident. I had transcribed the song Ushio from Clanad, and I was going through and adding chord names to the chart. It's in the key of F sharp, and at one point there's this part that goes... D sharp minor, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, and then it moves on. The G sharp chord is outside of the key, it's like a major two chord, and I didn't really think much of it first, but then I was kind of looking at that section by itself. I kind of laughed and thought to myself, hey, that G sharp is kind of like the five chord of the five chord. Wait a minute. So I went to Google and I found out that yes, that is actually a thing that happens, and it's called a secondary dominant. In this case, since C sharp is the five chord of the key, the G sharp was acting as the five chord of the five chord. If you understand how dominant chords work, which you should because I linked you to that video at the start of this, you'll know that dominant chords and their resolutions work with leading tones. And if we take, in, normally in the key of F sharp, uh, our two chord is G sharp minor. And if we raise that third up a semitone from B to B sharp, and we have a G sharp major chord, then that B sharp resolves up a semitone to C sharp. It's the exact same way your five to one progression works. We're just applying it to a different set of chords. In the opening to the Super Mario Brothers theme, there's a D9 chord headed to G7, which resolves to one as the melody begins. D is the five chord of G. And since G is the five chord of the key, then D is the five of five. So in short, if you wanna have a five of five chord, you just have to take your normal two chord and make it a major chord. However, the five of five isn't the only secondary dominant. There's also five of two, five of three, five of four, and five of six. The five of one is just the five chord. We've already gone over five of five, and five of seven doesn't technically exist. Each of these has their own particular sound character, and you'll get to where you can hear these and recognize them as you're listening to songs, which is useful because you'll know when you're looking for a specific sound in your own music or in your own arrangements, which one to use. By the way, I should also note that secondary dominants don't actually have to include the seventh. In the same way that the five chord doesn't actually need to have the seventh to be considered the dominant chord, um, most secondary dominants don't need the seventh. You can add it in if you want to add more tension and make your resolution stronger, but you don't need them. That said, there is one exception. If you're dealing with a five of four chord, you're gonna need to add the seventh in order for it to be a secondary dominant. For example, in the key of C, um, your four chord is F, and the five chord of F is C7. You have to add the seventh because a normal C chord is already part of the key, so it's no different. With that said, here are some examples of what each of these sound like. We'll start with the five of two chord. This would be when you take your sixth chord of the key and make it a major chord or a dominant seventh chord. Next here is the five of three. This is probably the rarest of the secondary dominants, but it does show up. This happens when you take your seven chord and make it a dominant seventh.
Next is the five of four chord, which is when you take your one chord and make it a dominant seventh. And as I mentioned earlier, it has to include the seventh in order for it to count. <laughs> This is really common, especially when you go from a resolution on the one, you change it to a dominant seventh in preparation for a new section, usually beginning on the four. Here are some more examples of the five of five. And lastly, here's the five of six. Uh, this is when you take the uh, three chord of your key and make it a major chord or a dominant seventh, and you, you most often resolve on the six chord. The five of six is really, really common in minor keys as well, where it's considered the default dominant chord, which I went over in my video on the harmonic minor scale, if you want to check that out. All right, so to sum this up, a secondary dominant is a major chord or a dominant seventh chord that acts as the five of some other chord in the key, aside from the one or seven chords. They're used if you want to build up more tension for stronger resolutions, and they're also used just for color and flair even if they're not actually resolving to the chord that they're expected to resolve at. If you're not sure how to find certain secondary dominants, or you're not sure what a specific secondary dominant would resolve to, go study the circle of fifths. Lastly, let me show you the one picture that completely clarified secondary dominance for me. I'm not even kidding, once I saw this, everything made sense. This week's album of the week is Twilight Sky, the uh, Atelier Eska and Logi vocal album. In particular, check out the song Sky of Twilight. The secondary dominance in that chorus just make it sound huge and epic, and it's a really good example of secondary dominance used very effectively. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.